Hello and welcome to today's Gapping Corner. We're going to talk about the Louisiana Derby. It's on Saturday. The favorite is going to be Mandalon. Now, Mandalon won the Risen Star Stakes on this course last time. He didn't do anything wrong. He stopped the pace and he took over in the stretch. But he's going to be the favorite. And a length and a quarter isn't a lot when you're talking about dirt racing. What do you think of Mandalon? Based on the price, there is not too much the, to separate the top three horses uh, on the recent star. So uh, the price would be too low for Mandaloon. Based on price, I don't. I will not take take him. But do you agree that he didn't do anything wrong in the recent star? No, nothing. No. Probably the other horses did something wrong, but he he didn't. All right. Fair enough. Anyways, let's talk about Proxy, who was second in the Risen Star, and he was also second in the LeCompte Stakes. So I'm starting to worry that he finishes second a lot. Uh, but this is Michael Stidham, who also trains uh, Mystic Guide, by the way. And he put Mystic Guide on blinkers last fall, and that seemed to help him improve and win the Jim Dandy Stakes and finish second in the Jockey Club Gold Cup. So I'm hoping that blinkers on Proxy might help him get to the winner's circle this time instead of finish second. What do you think? Does Blinkers put Proxy in the winner's circle? Well, we don't know, because the horses are different, uh, each other. But yes, Proxy lost some focus last time out in the recent start. And it was in the backstretch when the horses made his move. He lost a bit the focus and lost some ground. Maybe blinkers might help, we don't know, but if Stidham uh, has the the right decision, probably he will improve. The horse seems that in the stretch, he didn't like the whip or something, but he's training really well for this race and the distance would be yes i think the other distance would help well it is velasquez second time riding him so maybe maybe he knows how to ride him better than before let's talk about midnight bourbon midnight bourbon was third in the risen star but he did try to press a fairly fast pace i don't know if, if it was too fast but it was moderately fast and the pace setter, who was right and just, faded all the way to sixth. But Midnight Bourbon, he kept fighting for a little bit, and he held on for third. He only lost by a length and three-fourths. Uh, what do you think of Midnight Bourbon? Is is he just a speed horse that'll fade, or are you going to give him another chance? Well, I'll give, I will give him another chance in this race, especially because he would appreciate this distance. He is a really galloper, in my opinion. I think he will rate again this time because there will be more speed in Right and Just again and Wrong Classic and Star on my dreams because he broke slow last time. If he breaks clean, I think he's going to show speed. So I see a, a stalker Midnight Bourbon this time. And he's by this now, and this now should improve with with races. He's training extremely well, according to the reports. So I expect him a good race. Fair enough. He was a stalker in the Iroquois takes last fall, so I don't think he needs to be pressing the leader if someone else is going to do it. And you're right, tis now progeny do improve as they get older. So. He could win. Uh, I'm not going to put him on top, but he could win. Let's talk about your favorite horse, Hot Rod Charlie. He ships in from California. Uh, the past performances say Doug O'Neill is not training him. His assistant, um, I forget his first name, but his last name is Mora. He has Hot Rod Charlie in his care just for, I don't know how long the suspension is, but basically it's the same thing. I'm sure O'Neill is telling him what to do. And Hot Rod Charlie was third in the Robert B. Lewis stakes. He only lost by a neck. He had a fast pace to close into, but 
he just couldn't get the job done. What do you think of Hot Rod Charlie? Well, about Leandro Mora, okay, he's, he's Duke O'Neill assistant for so many years. And I know he always traveled to Maiden for, for the Dubai meeting. So there is no problem there. But Hodor Charlie, okay, he was second in the Breast of UNL. He was uh, um, upset that day, 94 to 1. O'Neill gave him a break and he came back in the Robert B. Lewis. In the Robert B. Lewis, okay, stakes. In this race, I remember he went with some slow workouts. So it seemed he was a bit short for the race. And O'Neill has they don't have a good record on the for the first race of the layoff. So I really think he was short for that race. He really needed the distance, the needed that race. But he really he ran well. He ran well that race, especially because he fight on the stretch between horses and was able to just lost by a, a neck, yes, by a neck, with, made, with Medina spirit. I know the pace setup suit him that day, but again, he wasn't on top form. I expect him he will improve too much for this race, and I really like it. His final workout, he was a five furlong in one minute and visually he really was visually impressive yeah i watched a couple of his workouts and it, it seems like he's beating his workmate every time and you're right he is moving well in the mornings i think he could win but i'm not going to place him on top either he's either third or fourth on my priority list are you afraid of his pedigree oh yeah that's what i was wanting to talk about too uh hot rod charlie is a half sibling to mitoli and mitoli if we remember he did stretch out to a mile, but he was mostly a sprinter. What do you think? Are you worried about the pedigree? Well, Mitoli was a sprinter, but he was able to win the mile. And well, but this guy is by Oxbow. And Oxbow ran well at the Kentucky Derby. And he was he won the Prigness and was second in the Belmont Stakes. So I think the pedigree would be okay. Fair enough. All right, we have to talk about Run Classic, who broke his maiden on this course, but it was only a mild 116th race. If you watch the race, it is kind of impressive. I thought he pulled away from the field pretty easily with only mild urging. He won by three and a quarter lengths, uh, but this is a run happy, and I don't know, can he stretch out from a mild 116th to one and three sixteenth? Uh, I wouldn't guess so on the pedigree. What do you think of Run Classic? Well, his pedigree suggests he would not like this distance. But yes, he was really impressive breaking his maiden. Another thing is that today he's going to face tougher competition, especially the top four are horses with a lot of class. He, uh, this horse is only has two races. He's likely raced, so it will be a tough task for him. Right. He's giving up experience. He's going from a maiden race to a grade two on the Derby Trail. But I don't know. He could hit the board. If you're going to play a trifecta or superfecta, you might want to throw him in, but I wouldn't play him to win. Yes, at his best, he will hit the board. And well, this horse is becoming a wise, a kind of wise guy, and we know the record of the wise guys. Okay, well, this is how I would rank my picks. I would put, uh, I would put Proxy on top. Mandalone is my second choice. Midnight Barbarin is my third choice. Hot Rod Charlie is my fourth choice. I'm saying all of them could win, but my preference is going to be Proxy because of the prize and the. And a longer distance and the blinkers. All right, what are your final choices? Okay, my top choice is Hot Rod Charlie. My second choice is Midnight Bourbon. My third choice is 
proxy and my fourth choice, Mandaloon. All the four horses has a lady chance to win. But I'm giving the slight edge to Hot Rod Charlie. Basically, we had the same picks. We just had them in a different order. Okay, that's today's episode of Capping Corner. Tune in next week, and we'll see what we have next week in store. But good luck with your bets, and we'll see you another time. Okay, see you next week.